because its ability to detect even minor like lord makes it an essential tool for maintaining the integrity and quality of the food products so this explanation that i have provided you now it covers the basic principles of dsc its applications in the food industry and the benefits it offers right next slide please now we will discuss the third uh, tool that can help us in identification of the non halal ingredient Previous one, please. Electronic nose technology. Yes. So it is like other equipment tools that we have used just for the uh, large detection in, and uh, for the detection of non-halal ingredients in the food product. It is also a sophisticated instrument that is used in food industry for detecting and, and identifying order uh, that includes uh, those indicating the presence of known halal components. So electronic nose is basically advanced instrument that mimics human sense of smell. It comprises an array of electronic chemical sensors that are coupled with pattern recognition system. So these sensors are capable of uh, recognizing simple or complex orders or smells by just generating distinct response patterns. And these patterns are then analyzed to identify specific, just specific substances that may present in that food <clears throat> that we are trying to uh, find, that we are trying to uh, identify. So one of the primary applications of uh, e-nose technology in the halal industry is to monitor the presence of lard in food samples, such as cooking oils. Lard is derived from pork, so its detection is important for ensuring that uh, food products adhere to uh, halal standards and also just keep one thing in your mind that uh, i am again using the example of lard uh, detection in uh, in all the tools i'm using that as an example because that is uh, explicitly uh, just explained in everything that is it is prohibited but we can use these tools for the identification of other known halal ingredients like we can identify the detection we can identify gel uh, just gelatin any other non-halal ingredient, we can use these tools to identify all of them. So here's a, just I'm going to explain detailed look of how Nemo's technology basically works. First, it starts with the order detection. I mean, Enos just uh, consists of sensors that respond to volatile organic compounds that are present in the sample. So each sensor reacts to different volatile organic compounds and uh, produce a unique signal pattern. Then we start uh, just uh, move towards the uh, pattern recognition. Signals uh, from the sensors are produced. Now we just do pattern recognition and we get the algorithms and these algorithms analyze the sensor responses and generate a fingerprint or olfactory image of the order profile. And then in case of lard is present, enos can produce a characteristic two-dimensional olfactory image known as vapor print. So this image just provides, represents a unique order profile of the sample that makes it suitable to qualitatively identify adulterant oils. So benefits of enos technology, we are discussing the benefits of all the tools that we are discussing now. So like other tools, um, Enos technology also has its benefits. It is non-destructive testing. It can analyze samples without destroying them that allow for continuous monitoring and multiple tests on the same sample. And rapid results, this technology provides quick detection and analysis that is significantly faster than traditional chemical methods. It is highly sensitive Sensors can detect even very low concentration of uh, volatile compounds that makes it effective for identifying trace amounts of non-halal components. It's versatile. It can be used for various types of food samples, I mean, from oils to processed foods that makes it versatile tool in the food industry. So by applying Enos technology, food manufacturers can ensure that their products are free from non-halal ingredients. And they maintain the integrity of their halal certification process. So this technology enhances quality control processes by providing rapid, accurate, and non-destructive methods 
for detecting adulteration. So if I summarize what we discussed about electronic nose technology, it's a valuable tool for the halal food industry. It uses sensors and advanced pattern recognition systems to detect and identify order that ensure that uh, food products don't uh, contain non-halal components such as lard. So ability to produce vapor print images uh, for qualitative identification further enhances its utility. I mean, Enos technology become, have, have become an essential part of modern food quality assurance and halal certification process due to its uses, benefits. Next slide, please. I think we, you are missing one slide. No, electron, two slides are on electronic nose technology. There is one more slide, I think, with the images. Okay, let's just start with the... Okay, just move to DNA-based uh, technique. Yes. Now we will discuss the another tool like DNA-based technique. We will discuss the application of DNA-based technique in food industry. Uh, their uses for special uh, special identification, particularly in the context of uh, halal food certification. So these techniques are highly favored for species identification because obviously DNA remains uh, relatively stable even after food processing. So this is a plus point. I mean, some techniques we cannot use for the processed food products, but uh, this technique uh, we can use it for even processed food products because DNA remains stable such as cooking or canning. So this stability allows for accurate identification of species in processed food products, which is important for maintaining the integrity of halal certification. So one of the most reliable methods developed by uh, developed for species identification that involves targeting specific DNA regions that are unique to particular species. So in this case, for example, mitochondrial cytochrome B uh, gene is commonly used. This gene is highly uh, conserved within species, but varies significantly between different species. So we make it an excellent target for identifying the presence of uh, specific animal DNA in food samples. For example, a method was just developed for identifying pork and lard using the cytochrome, uh, uh, cytochrome B gene. So by amplifying and an analyzing this gene, researchers were able to achieve excellent results in detecting pig DNA into various samples that ensures that products are free from halal food components, non-halal food components. So this involves several key steps. We will discuss one by one. First, we start with DNA extraction. We have the food sample. Obviously, we will need to extract the DNA from the, from the food sample. So which could be raw meat, processed meat products or fats. So this step is important because it isolates the genetic material for the subsequent analysis. Then polymerase chain reaction is used to amplify the specific region of DNA. Uh, like we discussed previously that we will um, focus on the cytochrome B gene. We will just extract this gene. And this tip, uh, PCR amplification just increases the amount of target DNA and because it make it easier to, de to just detect and analyze that specific part. And after amplification, PCR products are treated with restriction enzymes because that cut DNA at specific sites. So the fragments are then separated and analyzed using gel electrophoresis. So we just observe the pattern of fragments that can be compared to noun standards to identify the species. Because we have the pattern of fragments that we just obtained from the sample. 
and we compare it with the same uh, we compare it with the standard for example if we want to uh, identify lord detection in the food sample we will have the standard lord uh, pattern so we will compare it with that we can easily identify the presence of lord in the food sample so i provided this detailed um, exploration exploration of the detection and monitoring uh, technique uh, like uh, dna based technique so like other techniques we will discuss about the benefits it is highly specific and sensitive it can accurately identify even trace amounts of dna from specific specific species that ensures this precise identification obviously it is stable because dna remains stable under various processing conditions that allow for reliable analysis of both raw and processed food products and dna based technique can be applied to a wide range of food samples including meat fat and processed foods that make them versatile tool in food authentication halal food authentication so dna based techniques are invaluable for species identification in the food industry by targeting the specific genes like mitochondrial cytochrome b gene we discussed previously that these methods provide highly accurate and reliable results that ensure that food products are complying with the uh, halal standards and are free from non halal components such as pork and lard so the use of pcr and restriction enzymes uh, yeah, and um, it, it just helps us further enhances the ability to uh, detect and verify the species of uh, origin in food products that maintain consumer trust and regulatory compliance like all other techniques we we just discussed previously so this was a discussion about dna based technique now we will discuss about uh, protein based technique yes the, in the previous slide that was the pictorial observation of the uh, dna based technique i mean the uh, the left on the left side this is about uh, raw meat and fat sample and uh, on the right side it's for uh, sausages next up please now protein based technique uh, let's turn our attention to protein based techniques uh, specifically the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay uh, so, such as elisa it stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so its application in the detection of the halal food components in the food products and elisa is a powerful and uh, widely used technique for detecting and quantifying specific proteins or antibodies in the sample it is highly favored in the food industry due to its specificity uh, sensitivity and relative simplicity obviously so it works by using antibodies that specifically bind to target protein that allow for precise identification and quantification so in the context of halal food certification it's particularly useful for detecting derivatives of non halal animals such as pigs in the food sample and this is important crucial for ensuring that food products meet halal standards and don't contain any uh, any prohibited ingredient in the food so this involves several key steps i mean we just uh, started with the as all of, we we just start with the sample preparation with all of the techniques so food samples are prepared and processed to extract proteins as we were just doing with the dna extraction we, we had to extract the dna likewise in this process we'll have to extract the proteins and this step ensures that the target proteins are available for detection then we shift towards coating the plate the extracted proteins are added to micro plate where they adhere to the surface i mean specific antibodies that bind to the target proteins and that are then added to the plate then after the antibodies bind to the target proteins any unbound antibodies are just washed away and this step ensures that only the specific interactions are being measured now the level of detection a secondary antibody linked to the enzyme and um, the secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody when a substrate substrate is added the enzyme just catalyzes a reaction that produces a detectable signal that provides a color change 
So now intensity of the color change is measured using spectrophotometer. The intensity just correlates with the concentration of the target protein in the sample. I mean, greater the protein in the sample, greater will be the intensity of the light. That helps us in qualitative and quantitative analysis. I mean, we just observe the light that is obviously qualitative analysis, but greater the protein content in the sample, greater will be the, obviously greater the concentration, um, greater the intensity of the light. So th this gives us a clue about the quantitative analysis of the of the specific component that is uh, non halal ingredient that is present in the food. So our, our just developed methods like ELISA technique has proven to be highly effective in detecting pig derivatives in various food samples. And this has excellent results that ensures that halal components are accurately identified and quantified. So this is essential for maintaining the integrity of halal certified products and uh, it helps us to ensure consumer trust. Again, we are going to discuss about the advantages of ELISA. It is highly specific because it uses antibi antibodies that are highly specific to the target protein that minimize false um, positives and that ensures accurate detection. It is highly sensitive. It can detect even trace amounts of the target protein, make it a powerful tool for identifying the known halal components. It is very simple because this is uh, rel relatively simple to perform. That makes it accessible for routine use in quality control and uh, certification processes. And it's also versatile. El ELISA can be used for a wide range of food samples from raw ingredients to processed uh, food products that ensures comprehensive monitoring. So protein-based techniques like ELISA, they are invaluable for detecting non-halal components in the food products. So by using specific antibodies to target and quantify proteins such as pig derivatives, ELISA provides a reliable and efficient method to ensure compliance with the halal standard. So this technique helps us to maintain the integrity of halal certification and supports the trust of consumers into the authenticity of the halal food products, uh, like all other techniques, right? So we just, just discussed about everything in detail. Let me provide the brief overview of what we have discussed um, everything till now in the session. We started with the introduction we just discuss about the foods, halal and haram foods. And uh, we just explored the acronym A, B, C, D, and I, S. Uh, we discuss everything in detail about that. Then we discuss about global halal market, key Muslim market. Then we just discuss about the global competition in the market that uh, Muslim population, growth of the Muslim population is steadily increasing competition among uh, Muslims and uh, non-Muslim countries. I mean, it's not just halal food market. It's not just for, I mean, it's for Muslims. Non-Muslims are also shifting towards that to uh, capitalize the market. So then we discuss about the challenges in identifying the halal food products. So just to, uh, just to uh, cope that challenge, we discuss the techniques. Like we discuss about uh, uh, different techniques. Um, first, first we started with FTIR. Then we just to discuss about uh, differential scanning colorimetry. Then um, we discuss uh, in detail about electronic nose technology. Then DNA based techniques, and we ended with the pre uh, protein based techniques like ELISA. So we discuss everything in detail. Now, if you if there is something that is uh, confused, where you are confused now, you can ask me. By the way, thank you everyone for providing attention to this webinar, to this session. Now you can ask questions. Um, 